Yeah, I hope you guys can see my screen. You can yes. See my screen. Okay. yes sir. So like I was saying, once you do this setting in your Express app, you have enabled Express to recognize a kind of view engine that you are expecting in your app. Now we are going to create a folder in our SRC. We are going to have a folder called uh, so I can't I can't see the I can't see the uh, code. I'm only seeing the browser. I think uh, I'm I'm not it's code that is currently open. You can't see no, code. Only, okay, yeah, okay. I, I can see the code now. I can see the code now. Okay. Now I'm going to create a template, a pog. Um, so what the way pog is done, we say HTML, and pog uh, uses indentation, not in, unlike your normal HTML. You say head, and you give space. This is just like Python style. I two equals I two. And then we have our body, which is in the same line with the head, because it's another section altogether. Then inside our body, we have our H1. Which is message. Okay. Now, what we are going to do now in our main JS, we come and set up a route that we be for the default. Now, this is our route that is yeah, where we are linking all the routes. Now let's come here, app.use, sorry, app.get. Let's just say dot get here and I will create a route here. And then our route is the default route. Now we use our normal callback. And then the rest dot render. What we are rendering is the view inside slash view I think uh, just in this and we have the title that we want to display we put the title and then we say the goodie mat and then we know we also displayed message so we have to create the message variable here and then we we'll say welcome to the demand okay so if we come to our browser now and visit the default route which is just slash we should see okay but now what we have now they cannot find more do pog so we have to install pog that is something i just skipped and uh, this is similar to what um uh, chinedu was saying yesterday for not installing node mode so let's install pog npmi pog and that is all we need to do So just give it some seconds and let Paul get installed. Then we revisit our browser again. I think I was also missing something. I we need to set. We need to set our view directory where Express should be seeing the view. So we can come here and say app.view. We are setting views now. And this is 
selling express anytime we are calling a view go to the views directory that is the views folder you know the views folder is inside here inside the same folder the main is our size so that is to say slash um, src slash views yeah this is where all our views are located now our app have been restarted let's i think uh, pog have also been fully installed now we can come to our browser now and try to refresh all right now you see we have our message our view now although you see our title is working you have giddy mat as our title is showing on our browser tab here and then where we where we have a mistake is in the body so let's try to get what the issue is our variable is called message so let's look at the view in the views folder in desktop.org what are we seeing is it the same thing message Okay, I had a mistake there. I created space between uh, the H1 and the equals. You can have space at this level, but when you want to assign value to a HTML code like this, there should be, shouldn't be space between the HTML code or tag with the equals. So now if you look at our page now, we have a working HTML page running from our, being rendered from our Express app. And now we have the index page say welcome to Goody Math. And the title is what we specify. Now, if you look at in our HTML, we don't really have this content, Goody Math in the HTML. We don't even have this in the in the HTML. But all of them are coming from our main.js, our server side. This is rendered in S in Node.js. And what it does is it's going to render this index file. This is what Express does. I want to explain this line of code for us now. What Express does here, first of all, this get is a get request sent to the Node.js server. A get request, like I explained yesterday, is one of the HTTP request type that you use to fetch data from the server. And when the request comes to this empty route, is going to what we said should be done is that re, this response res is express response object and it has a method called render what this method render is to does is to look for a view specify here the name of the view that is going to go to a folder where you say all your views are located in this case we say that all our views are located in a folder called views inside sroc so what this method is going to do, as you gave it the name index, is going Express is going to go into these folders and look for a file called index.pog. Why it will look for index.pog is because we say we are using pog at this level as our rendering, our view engine. So it will look for any file called index.pog there. You don't need to put the pog, the dot pog here, just put the name of the file and express will do the rest. Then this bracket here is not the data we are passing from Express to the HTML, to the POG file. And what this means, once the Express is able to render this index file, it's going to attach this title and message as part of the data that is being sent from Node.js to the POG file, which will be rendered in the browser. Now, our app has been grouped into two now. We have a section for what will be rendered on the browser which is the views, everything in the views. 
We also have a section for things that are only going to be done on the server, which is every other thing outside the views folder. The code are going to be run and they only exist in the Node.js side. But Express then is going to send the things we have in the views folder to the browser. That is why every time we want to call something in the views folder, we use rest.render because what we want to do is we want the browser that to be able to see the file we are specifying in this place. And every other thing here is data. You can pass whatever data you want to pass here and the user will be able to see it in the browser. I don't know if you have any question at this point before we keep pushing. No question, sir. Okay. I have a question. All right. You can ask your question, please. Yeah, uh, Tine, do I can get you? Can you ask your question again? Oh, what? Yeah, you can ask your question again. Sir, you said that whatever is in in the back end is in the view but for the front end you say it's in the index but the index is in the um view no that is what I, so you, didn't, you didn't get me that what i said is everything outside the view is just a, yeah. uh, cannot be directly accessed what is in the view is what we want express to send to the browser then if there is any other thing we want to link to the browser like CSS and JavaScript related code, we still need to mm -hmm. link it in the view. So if you look at our code here, we are rendering what is in the view folder, which is where we have index.org. Now, all this other code we have here in the service route, they are all running on the server. But then when the request come to this particular route, it's going to pick what is here in the, what is the name of the file, and send it to the browser. Whatever you have in that file is what is going to display on the browser. Now look at. We can see your screen, sir. Look at in our case here, now we have a section called title. And this title, we are assigning the value of title which we are sending from the backend. From sir, I can see your screen. Okay, just a moment. Let me share the screen again. Okay, so. Now, if you look at our POC file, you see we have the structure for HTML here. This is just our HTML sec section. We have the header. In our header, we have the title. The title is usually what is displayed on the browser tab, just like here you have seen in this.org. This index.org is the name of our file, and that is serving as our title. In the browser, also, you have what shows the name of the page where you are. Now, we also have a message we are passing from the server, from the main JS. That is why we are passing this message as a parameter to the rendering of the view. So this render accepts two parameters. One is the name of the view. The other one is the object that contains the data that you're passing to the view. This can be removed. It's not a compulsory feature. So if you remove this and you visit the rod, then you know that the data you are calling is not going to be found. So in our case now, you see that nothing is displayed because the message is not sent and the title is not sent. So POC is not displaying anything for you. 
the POG view, uh, view file is not able to get the data or the uh, yeah, refer as title and um, message. But if we bring back the title and message here as a parameter in the render, record there, you see that we'll be able to get the result. So if what we pass here is a complex data like object and array related kind of thing, we'll be able to get it from the view by just calling, yes, assigning them to a variable. So I don't know if you're able to get uh, the explanation at this point. Yes, sir. I get it, sir. But I have a question, sir. Okay. Let us assume now that this, um, you know, you say render have to accept two parameter. In this, the second parameter, you know, is the message you want, you want um, the index to carry. Now, let us say this message, sorry, the, or the information you want it to carry. This message now, let us, assume, let us assume that you want this message, this welcome to Goody Mart, want it to be in the, maybe at the center, or want the color to be, you know, want to use um, side, for, um, for this font side, and you want to use the, uh, what's it called, is it the CSS, this thing to, how can, can we use CSS in this place? You don't use, this part of your code is no JS. You don't use CSS and JavaScript that is not running on the server. All those things you bring them to your podcast. So we've not gotten to where we do CSS. So just you just cool down until we get there. When we get there, you see CSS being added to our page. Do you get me? Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So now there is also something else. Let's try to create another view first. Let's create our So we have a folder called users slash pod. Let's just copy everything in the uh, index here. Now you see this is, now we are going to go to our user routes, our user route. Now instead of in the get resulting, instead of just fetching this, what we are going to do now, what I want us to do is, um, Okay. Let me get this off. Have our eyes. I want to look at something here. And then we are saying rest.render. And we have in our users slash index. And then the data we are rendering, we are passing to it is users now this user is a function so let's execute it i want to pick just uh, the first so when we come here i will pass it as an object so we just say user and there so what we need to do now in our view user dot uh, users in this i just want to get one what we are going to do now we have user dot name you know we have a name variable in user and let's go again to our user route our user route then we have the property title now we are going to call our title users that's the name of our page all right so now what we are going to do now we come to our browser again and then slash user do we have an error
oh, 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 we, this is the RAS. I think the, we have, uh, this is also expecting requests and uh, response. Let's see. Yeah, we have our user now. What? Let's look at our user control. I think uh, we are having something wrong there. That's where we need to do something. Okay, our user controller get all user is calling this method. Okay. Having, uh, I'm not supposed to. So I do this in the controller. Let me go back to the route and leave it the way it was. I just pick this. We've already uh, set the code differently. So this should have, this is going to result to an issue. So we come to the controller. In the controller, we've already gotten user. So what we do here, instead of this line, This is what we need to do here. Then we put users here. I just want to pick the first one. And then I close this. Close this also. Let's try what I want to test now. Yeah, you see, we've gotten the name of the user. This is a different page. We've gotten the name of our user, which is Chinedu. If you check the first person in the user draft, if you go to the user service, is uh, Chinedu. So we can pick this code instead of this and bring it to this particular one. I just want to show us what we can do in different places. So instead of Calling this here, we can then pick it out of here and say const user, the user that is found is equals this. So what we can do here, instead of passing this now, we can just pass user. We have a user like this. So if we call our slash user now with uh, an ID, we'll see the name of the person displayed on the screen. But then instead of using the index page, we can then see something like details. So we can come into user and create a different file called details.org. And what we am showing you here is how different that we can differently structure our page. We are now creating different web pages and we are giving them different structure. Now we have the name of the person here. You know, we also have Let's now use history. History is equals user.email. We want to display the email of the person. We also have H4. Sorry, let's still use history equals user.id. I think these are the three things we are sending about. We, also, we usually get about the user. So we put slash one here and we hit enter. Yeah, now you can see that we have the name of the person here in the H1 of, and look at, it's also very big. It's bigger than everything because it's a H1 file. Uh, sorry, data on, on the screen. And if you look at the next one, which is H4, this one is so H4. See, we are not be able, we're able to get the detail about this person. Instead of just sending a JSON, we are not sending a HTML file that is interactive, giving us the detail of the person. If you come here, and uh, change this to two, you are going to see different name, 
displayed on your screen. If you come, you put four, you see the different person. So the detail about the person is changing. So if you are the one that logged into our system and you come to your page, you'll be able to see your own details. So this is how we are able to manage different pages, different HTML file in our uh, project. We do this more as we proceed. So let me come back again and give you more detail. Now, what our code is doing, if you remember in our user route, we have a route for, we have a route to get a user by ID. Now, when we call, the, we are calling a function get user, which is available in the user controller. Before, as at yesterday, what we did at this point is just to, you know, render the data. We were only displaying a HTML file, but today we have to introduce HTML file. Instead of just rendering the data, we render the HTML file and pass the data to it. Yesterday we are just returning this data and it will displayed on the browser, but now we are displaying a HTML file, in this case a POC file, and pass in the data to it. Then the POC file is going to know how to pick this data and render it for us. Then we can style our POC file to be, you know, look the way we want it to be. We can style it the way we want and give it different uh, look. But if we are just sending the data, we are only building the backend, the restful backend. But now we have seen how we can introduce full stack feature into our Node.js application with Express. I guess it's, a very, it's very simple and easy for you to get. Yes, sir. Yes, the is is simple, but I'm still confused on you know since I was not here yesterday, sir. But I'll go back to that this thing. I'll go back to this thing this evening. Go back okay. to YouTube this evening. Okay. So what I want us to look at lastly is um, creating uh layouts you know there are some things when you visit a website that are very consistent you can see always the header is always there you see uh, different things about it so if you, you can see the menus are always in almost all the pages once you've logged in what that is done is by creating layouts so if we come here, instead of our, uh, uh, just like our index, we create a file called layout.pog. It's a layout.pog. Uh, this is our file name, .pog. Just like we did earlier, we have our HTML. I think I can have a pog helper here and the extension. Let's see if we have a pog helper. I haven't been using pog for a while, uh, but I just want to show us. Okay, we have pog. All oh, right. So let's install this. Let's see. It's going to give us a lot of help uh, while using pog. We have different view engine you can use with Node.js. So I've been using a handlebars most of the time. And we have Jade, you have Pog. So we need to, we are exploring Pog in this case. So now this is our Pog file. After the HTML, you know, we have the head. So we can specify our head. After the head, we have the title inside the head. This is just like a Python using indentation to uh, our title is remember we say goody math. Goody math. And then we now need to have add a variable. This is what we are getting from our page, our Node.js section. So anytime when we open our page, you will not be seeing goody math users, goody math home goody mat product so goody mat will be appearing in all the title as the name of the site 
Now, you can have a section also. Uh, if we have If we have a, a section, a block say scripts, and then inside this, we can have our script. In this case, this is just an uh, important script in your project. Let's say we need something like jQuery, jQuery.js. Now in our body, uh, the body will also start in the same position with the head because I'm just following the JIT standard. Then you can have a block, we have a block. This one is saying that we have a block section called content. Now this content is a section that in our page, in our layers that can be overwritten, you can up uh, 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 add something here. It's a dynamic session. When you create a block like this, a dynamic session that different things can be assigned to the place on your page. We have another block section called footer. It's a block of foot. And then in that block, we then have the footer. And here we can then create a paragraph. Here you just copy and you say whatever you want to write. In this case, you're just writing to be math. Content. Okay. Now, if we come to our user, our user, let's um, do that in our user details page now. We can then make sure that this thing, this page renders together with our layout. That is, it will be appended into our layout. So let's first uh, name our page. The name of our page is. Um, Details.org. Then you use the keyword extends. Layout.org. We want this to extend layout.org. You know what I told you about extend? As when you extend something, means it's going to have all the content in in the layout in, and also have its own content. So it will be both the layout and this content that will be joined together to send to the user browser. Now, instead of um, instead of having all this the way it is now, what we can do here now is we call our blog content. So we don't need the body again. Remember, body, header, and HTML have already been specified in the layer, so we don't need to specify them again. We can now come here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we specify the, the block we want to override. We want to override the content. And then we have our H1. which is our title, the title that we'll be sending from the Node.js section. Now, all these things remain the way it is. Let me create a space here. We are also, we are also sending a user, the user, so we just leave them the way they are. So let's try if our code is in order and see what happens. So we 
refresh our page here. Okay, what are we having? No search file directory layer.org. Oh, 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 I didn't specify the uh, the direct uh, relocation of the layout page. So what we, the layout is outside, so we can say, I think uh, it should be double, yeah, double dollar. Okay, let's try it again. All right, so now we are having issue with, uh, in our layout number eight, you have an error there. Let's look at what we have as an error in the layout.org number eight. We have the body. So what is the problem? Let's try to look for it. This is part of debugging saying inconsistent indentation, expecting either three or five spaces or tabs. So we have given it more than necessary. I think we have to delete this and try again. Okay, what is this one again? Inconsistent indentation. Well, what do we look at this? Oh, 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 our body is inside the header. So let's bring it out. Okay. And now we have something in the details line two. The declaration of template inheritor extent should be the first thing in the file. Okay, I think that was, uh, let's come back here again. Okay, so you see, Hog is giving us some corrections to regard the mistake we have here. So yeah, now we have, um, only name blocks and mixings can appear at the top level of an extending template. Well, this is um, having issue now with Paul. This give me issue like this. So we need to stick with the one I have been using for a long time. Uh, instead of uh, spending time to explore. Uh, for, I just want to include this and see if it fits the error we are having. Um, what, which we specify jQuery. JS. Let's run again. I think we'll also have an issue here. This is supposed to be inside the blog. Yeah, Python guys, we like this very well because it's more consistent with Python. You know, if you are used to using Python uh, spacing, you will enjoy uh, Paul because it uses those indentation. Now we have gotten our result. You see, now something, you see that we are seeing the name of our page here, the title, the name of our title. Now look at our title in the browser here. We have Goody Math users, and this is the user, which is the route where we are. And now we are seeing it in you in the browser users. Then we see the data in this one is the data we have in the user uh, detail page. Uh, you see here now we don't have HTML. We don't even have the we're specifying the title in the to show on the browser. This one is the one we have on the screen. 
displaying on the HTML. But then if you come to the layout, you see we have now Goody Math and then this variable title, which is coming from our Node.js section. And if you look at our footer, we've not overwritten the footer, so you might not see anything there. Do we have anything in the footer? Yeah, we still have our footer, yeah, Goody Math footer content. Okay, that is supposed to be our footer. We can overwrite it and put a consistent footer, which can appear in every place for us. If you if we go to another page, let's go to another page in the index. Now, what we are going to do, just pick um, we pick this section, then come to our index. We know we don't we no longer need the uh, this section because they are already in the file we are extending that is in the layer so let's go to the user section now in the browser remove this id just go to all users then we hit enter okay, we've not rendered a file in this place let's go there again in the controller and try to render Let's copy this. Then instead of sending all the user, we just send the first user here. And then we are sending user. All right, so this is what we are doing here at this point. And this is users. And instead of uh, detail, we are sending the index users slash index so let's if we come to our browser again and render and refresh sorry you see what we are having we are having chinedu which is the name of the person and market then you look at what do we have here we still have goody math slash uh, hyphen users now if you come to our index page what do we have we have the content session and what we are displaying is h1 user.name that is the name of the user then if you come to our layout we we are displaying the title which is users if you want to know where where the user is coming from the route you now look at we have our rat called users here so despite we are in another route in the user controller we are fetching all users or we are fetching a single user we are still displaying our user just like we put our title here users we also put it here users so that's something i'm going to finally do before we call it a day in the users in the instead of displaying a single user let's go to the controller first and just pass in all the users so remove the so that all the users we have in our database our system will be sent to the browser then we come in the index inside the users folder what we are going to do now we use a keyword another keyword in pog called each now you know we have something called users now so each users we want to display the name each user in users okay I want to display the name of the user so let's see h1 user.name let's see if this is going to work the way i expect so let's call the default route again yeah we're having an error say but got a new line where do we have that in number eight Um, looking at this is uh, equals user. Let's press the let's come here. I want to be sure we have 
yes we have users here get all users indent okay still an indentation error i'm really having uh, to learn more about this bug along with our class okay where do we have the issue i think it should be inside that is what i'm missing i think it should be inside because um let's bring in the name it should be inside <laughs> and we're on again yeah so now you see we are able to get all our person's name we have chinedu joe so what you can do here and um so if we say we have uh, zero we need to look at this one some other time i haven't done table here and uh, let me not complicate the issue so i want to have another one called instead of h1 i'm going i want to have um, just a p equals this then i have what we have here is um, name is equals this let's let me try this and then see how it goes yeah we have an error i've already seen that it's problematic Okay. Now let's bring in again user dot um, email user dot id. I'll take some time to look at this box so that I will be having consistent time. Um, Preserve. All right. So what I I need to bring in the head one so that our data will be bigger on the browser. Okay. What I was just checking is displaying everything in the user in a straight line. We'd use a table to do that, or use uh, we style our code later. But now you look at what we've been able to get here. We've been able to display the names of all the users in our database, and that is exactly what I want this page to do. The users. So when you come to this page, you'll be able to see all the people that are registered on our website. Okay. Do we have any question at this moment? Because no, sir, no question, sir. All right, so we'll call it a day here till we meet again tomorrow. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, sir, so can, I, can I get the video today or it should be tomorrow? The other video. Uh, yeah, it should be tomorrow. I will have to do the imaging tomorrow morning before afternoon. Wow. I should be able to put it online. That will take me just a couple okay, of so. minutes. Okay, yeah, so. I hope uh, you guys are enjoying the tree, or it's a bit confusing or challenging. Yeah, it's um, for me, I'm catching up. Um, I'm enjoying it, but I just want to go through the yesterday class that I skipped. Okay. Okay, so just enjoy the date we meet again tomorrow. <laughs>